Gloucester is on the original route from Swindon to South Wales, and relief from the heavy traffic only came with the opening of the Severn Tunnel in 1886. These views show trains along the four-track section between Newport and Cardiff. At 69.47, Helmingham Hall pours through a snowy Newport on the 28th of December 1964, while shedded at Gloucester Horton Road. On the 26th of January 1985, another hall returns to Newport and is standing on the River Usk Bridge. Then she departs for Swindon, on the same train seen earlier climbing the Golden Valley. This is Pontypool Roadshed on the north and west route from Newport to Shrewsbury. Driver Jimmy Watkins took his camera to the shed and on the footplate in 1962 and is seen here oiling up 4916 Crumlin Hall. He is joined by a storekeeper and is seen on the footplate with his fireman before backing to the coal stage. Clem Ford, another storekeeper, puts in an appearance, as does one of the shed shunting drivers. 4916 is then driven back by Jimmy Watkins onto a pit so he can go underneath to finish off his oiling. Pontypool Road played host to a vast variety of loco types. 5097 Serum Castle is brought out of the shed by the shed turners. Seventy-two thirty was one of eight two eight two tanks for working heavy coal trains from South Wales. Twenty-two ninety-eight was visiting from Newport Evu. Serum Castle passes the water crane, whose bag is missing, probably due to the crane being chained to a tender while filling and the loco moving off without untying it. The shed had a number of halls on its allocation. This one was being put on a road for fitters' attention. Coming off shed is a 560062 tank, known as Jumbos, and used on the Vale of Neath passenger and freight turns. Supplementing the halls were the slightly more powerful granges, this one going off shed, the firemen bringing coal forward into the well of the tender. There were plenty of pannier tanks, this one is going off shed for the south end pilot duty, complete with shunter's truck. The old yard pilot is 4639, with driver Sid Weber in charge. A view of the south end of the shed, which comprised of a roundhouse dating from 1855. Boiler Smith Ben Phillips comes on duty. On board 6949, Heatherton Hall is an ex Abergavenny driver, whose shed had closed in 1958. The LMS presence is seen with Jubilee 45660 Rook, a Shrewsbury engine, which had worked down to Pontypool Road on a Manchester to Plymouth working by crewmen. Some fine pollution is being emitted by one of Pontypool Road's 7200 class tanks, but dead on shed is a smaller 280 tank 5218 of Aberbee, which had suffered a van running into it while taking water at Crumlin. The engine continued in service until September 1964 out of Aberbee. Mr. Hobbs, a ship foreman, will not be booking 5218 out today. Jimmy Watkins, fireman, comes to join us. 
Driver Bill Stone goes off shed on Bristol St. Phillips Marshes, 6860 Aberporth Grange. Sixty-eight sixty backs past sixty-nine fifty-eight Oxper Hall, the last hall built at Swindon in April nineteen forty-three. The next batch were Hawksworth's modified halls. The fireman is putting the bag in to fill the four thousand gallon tender. Driver Fred Smith pulls the crane back, and then sixty-nine fifty-eight is off shed. The ash hole was always busy. 9665 blows its brake whistle and Foreman Hobbs stops a new arrival so that a shunt can take place with driver Arthur Lewis in charge. Jimmy Watkins' fireman at the time was John Ellis. Another crew come on duty at this very busy shed. A 5600 class shunts near the south box after some track relaying. Back on the shed, driver Phil Williams oils up his loco, a Stanier 8F48271, while his fireman goes off to get a brew of tea. A slip for the camera, and the 8F from Toten goes off shed with Phil Williams. Tom Watts and Jack Jones come on to work in this truly steam age atmosphere, impossible to recreate in preservation. Cardiff East Docks, Tresco Abbey, enters Pontypool Yards. Going home from work is Stan Bennett. Now Ted Ashman and his mate. And Harry Waring, Harry Robbins and Hubert Jones spot Jimmy filming them. Another visitor to 86G Pontypool Road was 7800 Torquay Manor, the first of a batch of 20 manors built before the war. Built in January 1938, she was withdrawn from Shrewsbury in August 1964. We leave the shed now as a 6400 pannier departs from the station. A freight right on the mark waits to follow her. A 5600 tank passes the south signal box, manned in two halves by two signalmen, with a veil of Neath passenger train. The route towards Crumlin, near Transnut, Pontypool 7201 heads a van train towards Coombe Glyn, and a pannier heads towards Pontypool Road from Neath. <laughs> Continuing our journey towards Crumlin, Abadair 6661 with Abadair men work past Jimmy Watkins' Class 37 diesel. On another day, Jimmy was on a passenger train towards Crumlin, climbing up Coombe Glyn. An overnight snowfall had caught one car driver out, and his car came crashing down towards the line. Jimmy says he believes the driver was unhurt, not the same for the car. A stop at Hafadrinus and friendly banter with the signalman. The National Coal Board had a mine here, and industrial steam engines shunted the yard into the 1970s. The wagons in use on this occasion are two door 21 tonnes.
D6887, an English electric type 3, brings in coal from another pit for washing. Jimmy Watkins was looped near Hapadrinus on this 280 one day. Most GWR local cabs were similar, and these views show Jimmy and his fireman demonstrating some of the controls. The fireman is shoveling coal around the back of the box, although the firebox was about nine foot long, and some would indeed need to be thrown that distance. Next, checking the gauge glass with the drain cock. Needing some water in the boiler, the water feed valve on the tender is switched on, and then the injector steam valve. Then the water valve is adjusted for flow and no water wastage from the overflow pipe of the injector. Jimmy now creates the brake with the large injector and sees that the needles rise to 25 inches of vacuum. Then he destroys it to see the brake goes on, recreating it and opens the regulator to move, with a blow on the whistle of course. Stopping again, he throws the pole reverser back into pull reverse gear. This is a view westward above the tunnel showing Hapadrinus platform. From the platform, 6115 approaches, a transfer from Slough to Pontypool Road in February 1961, after its duties on the London suburban trains went over to DMU operation. Passing from the Neath direction is 6664 from Aberdare on a coal train. From footplate at Hapadrinus platform, we pass 2873 from Aberdare, being assisted by the Crumlin banker. 2873 went to Woodhams of Barry and eventually purchased for preservation. Chinkin Lewis hands out the token at Crumlin Junction, and we pass out over the Crumlin viaduct, 200 feet above the Ebu Valley. Crumlin Low Level Station is below us. A pannier heads east for Pontypool Road, off the viaduct, and passes Crumlin Junction Box. The winds could be strong here, and a rigid stone viaduct of sufficient strength to withstand this buffeting was rejected. So braced, cast and wrought iron tubes and girders were used. Designed by T.W. Kennard, it was opened in 1857, with two tracks, reduced to one in 1927. A pannier passes Crumlin High Level with another coal train for Pontypool Yards. A prairie tank banker runs westward to clear the single line viaduct and the pannier departs, assisted by a classmate. Welsh steam coal was so in demand for the Royal Navy at Scapa Flow in World War I that over 11,500 trains of it were routed this way, with the returning empties as well. By World War II, Crumlin Viaduct was still a strategic target and the Luftwaffe were issued with a photo of it, complete was pannier tank. Sixty-one fifteen again with a passenger train from Pontypool Road to Neath. The line under the viaduct through Crumlin Low Level was the Westerns line from Newport to Ebu Vale and saw heavy iron ore trains along it. 92238 banks a train towards Aberdeen. From Jimmy Watkins' cab, we approach Lanhillus, opened in 1850 and closed in April 1962 when passenger services ceased along this route. Round the corner and past Aberbeek Loco Shed, with its allocation of mainly small and large tank engines. A view of the station shows it to be a junction, the line to Ebu Vale to the left and to Bryn Mawr on the right. The Vale of Neath Line closed as a through route in June 1964, only the section east of Hapadrinus Colliery remaining open. Pontypool Road's 9488 pulls out of Crumlin High Level to cross the viaduct. There was an intermediate hill across the valley, thereby splitting the viaduct into two portions. It was scheduled for preservation, but with no maintenance, it deteriorated rapidly. So dismantling began in 1967.
These scenes were taken in June 1965, showing the abandoned track bed through Hafadrinus platform, Crumlin Junction box and signals in the distance. The Leyland lorry is having a rough time of it. Another colliery served by Pontypool Roadshed was Glenavon. Working a load of coal to the BR Exchange sidings is number five, Nora, an Andrew Barclay product of 1920, dropping his fly all over the track. The NCB permanent waste staff used horse transport to get around their system. Pontypool Road 7220, weighing in at 92 tonnes, exerts all of its 33,000 pound attractive effort to pull a full load out of Lenaven Yards. On this day, she was in the hands of driver Bill Chadwin, ably assisted by fireman Dave Skinner, as can be seen by the exhaust and safety valves. Also present are Sid Webber, Edgar Charles and Arthur Flowers. Coming down the branch we encounter a couple of trespassing horses. Glenavon Low Level was opened in 1854 by the Monmouthshire Railway. This was absorbed by the GWR in 1875. The line through Coomavon closed to passengers in April 1962. was single as far as Coombe Froude, thereafter double to Newport. Abersicken, which served a coal mining area. A rare view of the Pont Neuf pilot with a Noah's Ark guards brake van for working the steep branches from Trevethin Junction where a full load was only five wagons. The van was built in 1899. Southwards towards Ponty Pool. First Crane Street and then Blendire Road Halt, opened as late as 1928 by the GWR, passing the yards at Ponty Pool Road Middle Junction. That would deal with over 2,000 wagons a day in its heyday. A local station on the line to Newport was Sebastopol. Opened by the GWR in 1928, it closed with the ending of passenger services in April 1962. Pontypool Road was on the north and west route and saw the biggest passenger engines. The last King in service, 6018, passes the station in 1962, while another, 6004, King George III, with Tommy Davis in charge, passes south. Sixty-eight eleven Cranbourne Grange, with a train for the West Country via the Severn Tunnel, is in the hands of Glam Price, and forty-nine fifty-eight Priory Hall, a Pontypool Road engine, also passes south. Jimmy Watkins Shed closed in May nineteen sixty-five and was eventually demolished. Opened in the 1850s with a roundhouse, it was extended with an eight-road through shed. In its heyday, the work required 135 sets of men to work around the clock to Shrewsbury, Worcester, Bristol, Birmingham, Newton Abbott and the South Wales lines and collieries. They ventured to Cardiff, where we see stored kings and other engines, which made the GWR so distinctive. Prairie 4169 is X works and working its way back to Nice from Swindon. 6003, King George IV had served the Great Western for 35 years.
Pontypool Road's own 6820 Kingstone Grange moves onto the shed, while on the main line a castle steams by on the London. This has been a video of some GWR routes from Oxford to Cardiff, viewed by some enthusiasts of the railway, but also an invaluable contribution from Jimmy Watkins, Pontypool Road driver, who was proud to work for the company, and some of it has been seen through his eyes and his mates. Steam has returned to the north and west routes since the demise of regular steam working on the western region at the end of 1965. Not quite the same as the old days, perhaps but a flavour of the Great Western Railway can still be savoured.